Hello, I'm Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Christina Wan. I'm Cadet Senior Master Sergeant Kusha Tarari. I'm Cadet Second Lieutenant Michelle Lindsay. And welcome to our podcast. So we're going to talk about four things. One, recent strange obsessions. Two, squishmallows. Three, favorite shows. And four, new hobbies. So <laughs> would anyone like to get us started on the recent strange obsessions? Mm, I can go first. Okay, so my recent obsession has been like, not exactly video games, but like more about the video games, like their lore and their history. So usually lore is like the backstory and like the history of the characters. For example, in a book, you know, a character will have its backstory and like it's kind of its history. So you kind of call that lore. And in video games, I don't know what it is, but usually you play these characters and this is you play them and you play them in whatever scene. But recently I've been just like reading into like the lore and backstory because I just find it so interesting. So like what I'll do is I'll go on like Google and I'll just like Google like every single individual character or whatever. And I'll go to their wiki page and then I'll read about them. And then like I just go to like every single wiki page and I just read about them. And like it's not even related to the gameplay. For example, in, in like this one game, League of Legends, like the the characters and like their backstories have nothing to do with the game. But I just read them. I'm like, oh, you know, I, I see this. And it's like, oh, and this character is connected to this character. And then I'm like writing down ideas and like other games. Like, oh, my God, what if this and this happen? It's like I have like a bunch of head cannons and like I have a bunch of ideas in here. It's kind of, it, I think it's, I think it's a weird obsession. I don't know why I'm reading so much about fictional characters. No, I get it though. Like, I kind of understand that. Yeah, like, for, it's the same for me, where um, with games or books even, just, just finding out, like, the plot and everything and how this led to this is just, it's like, wow, like, this is really, like, you know, well thought out, you know, so I'm just really impressed by that. Well, recently, I've been getting a lot into just around video game power. And I think it's, I think for me, it's more about like getting better at like in strategy and reactions. So like I'm better at like generally knowing what to do when something happens and being able to react really quickly, which, which is hard for me because I don't play a lot of video games. So yeah, but I've been working on it a lot. What do you think, like, like about the game? uh well i think the characters are so pretty like the character designs are just gorgeous i don't i don't know who the designer is but i absolutely love them <laughs> like you said like getting better at the game like for me one of my games league it's like like obviously when you start off like, at a game you're, you know you're bad when you start off because like you're not used to it yet but like as you do it more you're like hey i'm like i'm kind of feeling good at this game and then you play more and then you're like yo i can get better and it's like the obsession of getting better almost is like the thing that's really addicting about the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like a little left out because mine's not a game. But um, do you want to say though, like, if we if we had this podcast before, like maybe a few weeks ago, I would definitely would have said Genshin, Genshin Impact, just because. <laughs> I mean, like I said earlier, I love a very I love a good story, and you know, very well-developed characters and Genshin had all that and it was very very addictive but right now um I guess it's a little weird I don't know but I've been obsessed with trying to give myself a bunch of work but also trying to get a lot of rest so it's been <laughs> it's been very chaotic for me because you know, I want to, I want to nap, and I want to do things that I like, but I'm also like, no, I want to work on this, and work on that, so it's been very, um, it's, it's been very difficult, but yeah, I don't know, it's just two opposites, two opposites. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I think for me, like, uh, I'm always trying to find something to fill my time, I'm trying to find something to do, if I'm not doing this, then I should be doing something else, or I should be talking to someone, or just doing anything instead of just, like, giving myself time, which is obviously not healthy, but I'm working on not doing that as much anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think it's, like, I think it's fine as long as you give yourself breaks here and there and just remind yourself, like, hey, you got your own hobbies to do. You should also do things that you like. Um, I think for me, though, like, why I'm obsessed with doing work is just because 
I like the satisfaction of completing something, you know, like I feel good at the end, right? Like, oh, like I did something productive, right? And, um, you know, I'm trying to get out of the mindset of, you know, you have to always be doing something productive. Um, and I think I've been getting better at it bit by bit, but still, still, um, still trying to fix that. I think it's good though recognizing that like you deserve rest because like obviously it's like oh I need to like be doing stuff to like be successful right and like you're building towards yourself or like building towards things that you need to do and you want to do but at the same time like I think it's good to like acknowledge that like everyone needs rest and like you need like time off like your brain like cannot be working 24 7 like that's how you have sleep right you sleep and like after you wake up to like, your rest because your body needs a break like you need a break physically and mentally like you can't always work so I think it's good that like you guys are also like even though you're doing work I'm glad that you guys are like recognizing that you get rest otherwise I'm gonna like make sure that you get sleep every night <laughs> that's weird I was like I think I don't know if this makes sense but like I think people do rest like while they're working if that makes sense like I know that kind of contradicts you know each other but it's like sometimes when people work they feel kind of like at ease just you know get distracting themselves with something um and I think that like that kind of applies to me too like unfortunately for spring break so far I've just been working I haven't really been doing um much of the things that you know, I'd usually do if I wasn't working so like drawing and stuff but also at the same time like it's not really tiring me out like I'm enjoying it as I'm doing it and it's also I I I enjoy the distraction so um, I don't know if it's the same for you guys but I think that yeah in some way working can be kind of like resting for you um I think personally for me when I work I usually get really drained like I need a separate break it doesn't even have to be sleeping or anything it's just like I need a distraction from thinking about deadlines and work before I can actually start focusing again. So it's a little bit different for me. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I, 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 feel like I'm, I feel like a goldfish right now. No. <laughs> maybe it's like, maybe work is kind of like resting when you're doing something you like, right? So maybe research. Sure, that's interesting. true. Interesting. Like for me, gosh, if I could research about dinosaurs, I'd have so much fun with that. Like I'd love to research <laughs> on my own time. I love dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool. I agree. Dinosaurs are pretty cool. <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah. Um. Speaking of um. Well, I guess they're not really related. I was going to try and relate dinosaurs to squishmallows, but <laughs> there are dinosaur squishmallows. But yes, our next topic is um, squishmallows. So um, yeah. I don't know if you guys have heard about it, but it's basically just a, it's like a typical, uh, you know, you're a typical plushie, except it's very soft. Um, it's also, it's also um, got a simple design to it too sometimes. And it's been... Know, trending it's been on tiktok social media platforms everywhere basically and everyone's been obsessed with it so i just wanted to ask what do you guys think about squishmallows okay i don't know what a squishmallow is like okay i don't know because i've been like holding this i i think this is a squishmallow i don't know i i i am not i'm not trendy at all but like anything like cute and cuddly that i can cuddle i will like cuddle it and hug it and love it that includes cats even though i'm allergic but like I don't know what they are, but like they sound really cute. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, wait, actually give me a sec. I'm gonna grab mine real quick. Okay. Sushi, what about so you? Yeah, I don't have a squishmallow. Well, I don't have any, but I have a lot of stuff that was like I don't know if I can turn this, but that entire thing right there. Wow. <laughs> Wait, maybe I just hanging one. in my room. Wait, I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, but okay, like I um I love love squishmallows. <laughs> okay, like they're so soft. I really um, need one. <laughs> yeah, and like you honestly don't even need to use them. To, like I know people use them. I know people use plushies to hug them. Oh, I think I think this is a that squish is a squishmallow. Okay, yeah, my my sister gifted this one to me, and I'm like, oh, that's a cute stuffed animal. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> like 
you know, you could use squishmallows for many things. Um, I know people hug them, but for me, I'm not, I don't hug them. I use them as a head wrap. <laughs> <laughs> they do do that with you, though. That's a good utilitarian. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I really like squishmallows. I have this one. I've been, I really want to collect them, but my mom doesn't let me. But I have this one and that big one back there. Um, <laughs> is that, a that one doesn't have a name yet. Oh, that's huge. It's a unicorn kitty. Um, yeah, this is Yams the frog. <gasps> you named it. That's so cute. <laughs> oh, yeah. Apparently, this uh, one's a rare one, too. Really? I didn't oh, know. Really? I've just been using it as a head <laughs> <laughs> oh, collectors for smell like uses headrest. All the collectors are crying. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, but um Kushi, you should definitely get a squishmallow. I highly recommend I definitely it. want one. We could be <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but like I've I've been seeing so many online. Like apparently now they got like collections, like a spring collection came out. Or maybe it's already out, I'm not sure, but it's like there's so many different types and different things. Um there's one that I really like. Uh it's a uh, it's a what's it? What is it actually? Okay, my, um actually I like all of them to be honest. They're all so uh, but there's a, yeah, there's a um there's a dinosaur one and a red panda one that I want. Oh okay. Um, one time I took, I like took some time out of my day to like drive around near Mesa to find a squishmallow, and I could not find a single one. Um, that's how oh, it's no. so hard. Like, it's super hard to find them. Like, I got this unicorn kitty one at Costco, and when I was at Costco recently, they were selling them too. And you know, it's just why it's so hard to find and. No, I'm just, I guess I'm surprised mm -hmm. that, you know, like, these became super popular. I mean, um, it kind of makes sense. It, yeah, it does make sense. They're like, yeah, like so cute, they're squishy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we don't want one. It's okay, because if you grab yeah. one of your stuffed animals, we'll just, we'll just pretend it's a squish ball. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can grab my biggest one. Yes, uh, grab your biggest one. <laughs> Should I grab my biggest one too? Sure, why not? Okay, let me go get it. I don't, I don't know if my pan accounts as a squish ball, but they're really cute. Okay. I, I like okay. stuffed animals. Okay, like this, really isn't, this isn't the biggest one, but it is the most squish fellow like one I have. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's adorable. I love slushies. Like, okay, people, like at least some people I talk to are like, oh, like he's so super plushy, but you know, I still want one. <laughs> I love them. Look at this. I love the stuffed animal. <laughs> they're so big. That's not funny. Like stuffed animals are cute. Like don't shame people for having them. Like they're they're nice to hold. Like don't you like holding your pillow sometimes or like resting your head against something soft? I don't think that's a crime. Like do you think do you think sleeping is like bad because you're like in something soft and comfy? Like no. So you shouldn't be shamed for like liking plushies and stuffed animals like it's just something nice to have you know an accessory like i'm not gonna yell at you for having a watch why are you gonna yell at me for having a stuffed animal mm -hmm. that's what i thought <laughs> Keep flexing. yeah and honestly i don't i don't think that's really a problem nowadays because i'm sure more and more people are buying plushies and just like you know accepting the fact that like hey they're awesome and they're cool yeah <laughs> definitely yeah um Okay, I guess I can just hold on to this one. <laughs> yeah, we'll, um, we'll just hold on to one for like the rest of the podcast. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. We'll just the size difference between Kamikawa's and mine. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think okay. If we have, don't have anything else to say, we can move on to the next topic, which is favorite shows. Oh, yes. So, have we been binge watching anything or obsessed with any? Shows that have come out. Cause she look like you have something to say. I kind of. <laughs> I uh. So there's this show on Netflix called Supernatural, and um, I started it a few months ago, and then I, 
it, it's 15 seasons right and each episode's like 40 minutes and there's like 20 episodes per season I finished it in like two months okay because <laughs> it was really good. yeah oh and I, the plot line is so good and it's considered horror but I honestly it was really interesting like the plot line is just insane there's so many plot twists that I just couldn't stop watching but it's just it's just my favorite show right now I, I <laughs> think want to give middle us, oh wait oh, you can sorry. first you can um, first Christina thank you so do you want to give us like a for those who don't know including me because I've, I've heard of it but I don't really know what it is do you want to give us like a general um, description of the show okay sure uh so it's basically about these two brothers who um they have to go out and basically fight monsters. That's like really general. There's like a really big plot line. That's the thing I really like more. It's there's like this big plot line. Uh, and it's like, yeah, each season, it's kind of like building upon the season that was before it. And the last season finale is great, but uh, it just builds upon. And there's like small plot lines per episode, but then they also build on this giant plot line. But the basic idea is two brothers going against everything else, uh, going against everything in the world. And it's really nice. I remember I watched it in like middle school, but the thing about me is like, I really like, like I can like tolerate horror, but at the same time, like I'll get nightmares. So in middle school, I like saw Supernatural. I'm like, oh, I think this is a cool show. So I think I got to like season nine, but I think I just had to like, just completely stop watching the show because like, I just got too many nightmares and it got like too hard for mm-hmm. me to sleep. So I had to stop because, like, I'm not, like, I'm really not that good with horror, but, like, it was so good. Like, the first time I watched I literally had nightmares, and, like, I just, like, had to, like, take a break before continuing, like, the rest of the season and stuff. I do think it was interesting. I like the brothers. I think having it as, like, two brothers rather than, like, two friends also is, like, really nice. Yeah. Like, they also, they like, their bond and, like, family is a really strong reoccurring theme, which I really mm-hmm. enjoyed. It's just, like, oh, it's not yeah, like some random person. It's, like, oh, I, like, do anything for you. Like, I make... I make like deals for you. I'd like sacrifice myself for you. And I really like that part of the story. But I think, which is what like kept the stakes pretty high. Cause like they kept sacrificing, the, the brothers kept sacrificing themselves for the other. And I thought that was really sweet. And I, that was like a point of the plot that I really, really enjoyed. Like after like season nine, mm-hmm. I just, I just got too scared. And the plot line got a little too long for me. I'm like, okay, no, I'm, I'm the plot line. Gets and I was like, okay. Yeah. Like, the plot line definitely gets pretty yeah. intense. No spoilers here. No spoilers here. Mm-hmm. No, no spoilers. Nope. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I think something that like I had to say, Michelle, is you don't like horror, right? I think Kushi, if I'm correct, you like horror. Um, I and love I horror. Like horror too. <laughs> I feel like if we ever like went to a Halloween <laughs> party, you know, like just like for chilling, you know, like making cupcakes together, like that type of party, you know, like the really chill ones. I feel like I'd like walk in the door and then like everyone, because I'm pretty sure like some of our friends like watch it. I'm pretty sure I like get the one that gets pranked and like I jump and like I hit my head on the ceiling because I jump so high and then like, I start crying and then everyone's like, oh, sorry, like, here's a cupcake. No, okay. I can, I, I've never been to like, you know, like, um, I don't know what's it called. Um, some like, I don't know. Halloween like party? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, I think what, yeah, something like that. Um, where, uh, I don't know if you guys been to, but I think at Universal Studios, there's like the Walking Dead. Like there's um, some attraction for that. Um, and like, you know, it's like in person, like, you know, they're all like, you know, trying to scare you and stuff. Oh, I've yeah. never done that, but I don't think I could do that because the reason why I can watch horror movies is just like, oh, I have the screen here to protect me. I'm not actually in there; they're in there, um, you know. But if I was sometimes like a fun thing that I like to do when I'm watching um horror movies is just kind of put myself in there and just be like, okay, would I be able to survive that? Well, I do. Most of the time, <laughs> I cannot survive. <laughs> Well, maybe I could. <laughs> who knows? I maybe, but if it involves like, I don't know, some like, like quick thinking, right? Um, I'm part. I can't. <laughs> or like you know, just because it's like, because I'm just panicking, so I'm just, I'm just like, uh, like spacing out, which is not good. <laughs> but yeah, um, for favorite shows, I. I don't have it. I 
I honestly don't watch shows that much. Um, and I don't watch TV. I guess something I've been watching recently is the um the Five Nights at Freddy's series. <laughs> just, oh, because, no. just because okay, it's really interesting. Like if you haven't watched it, go watch it. It's so interesting. Like the plot and everything is like just wow. And it's like watching a horror movie too, except it's a game. But Five Nights at Freddy's, and they have a new one coming out, and I'm so excited to see someone play that. It looks so good. Um, but yeah, uh, it's not a show, but Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, it's really fun to watch. <laughs> Never to like go trick or treating with you guys because I'm pretty sure I get pranked so hard and I start crying and then we have to go home because like I won't stop crying. Oh, I, I, wait, like, like, when I do trick or treat, I never really encounter anything scary. I um, feel like something would happen, like a twig like, would break behind us, and I'm like, oh my god, you're pranking you me. Guys- have you guys ever been to that um, haunted house? It's like uh, close to Digman. It's like up the hill from Digman. I I know what you're talking and it's like this house. They set it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they like yeah. set up like a little haunted thing where you have to like walk through it and there's like different displays. It's it's so fun. Yeah. I love going through it. <laughs> I don't know if I've gone through it, but I don't think I have the. Um, sorry. I don't think I have the. Um, it's okay. Yeah. I mean, I like, think it's fun because it's like kids, you know, like it's high schoolers that are doing it too. So it's like, I don't cool. want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, yeah, I don't want to. Uh, if there's you know a situation where I do cry, I don't want to cry in front of them and in front of other trick or treaters <laughs> and ruin their night. But I know what you're talking about. Um, mm-hmm. and yeah, I think. When it comes to um scary things, the reason why, like when I'm watching it, I don't get scared really is because I'm more angry than scared. I'm more angry at the characters for doing something. So like, for example, you know, John <laughs> is running away from someone, right? And he decides to like stop and look at this, um, you know, definitely not um bad thing, like bad item. I'm just like, Johnny, why would you, why would you keep running leave the house you know um <laughs> that kind of thing um so yeah okay so we only have yeah, so we should move on to the next topic. so last topic is new hobbies so i think i'll just go first for this one um some new hobbies i okay. picked up from quarantine was definitely i got well it wasn't a new hobby but i just got back into an old one um, drawing. So because of quarantine and because of the extra time I had, I was able to spend more time on drawing and I got really into digital art as well. So, um, you know, I, at first I practiced a bit on the, on my phone. Actually, I used to draw on my phone and that was really hard. But then um, after like maybe like a few weeks of drawing or I think a month after that, I was able to get an iPad and you know draw professionally and honestly that that's the best decision I've ever made because I love digital art and and you know I'm so glad to get back into drawing because I completely forgot how much I enjoyed it because of all the work and um you know just life throwing a lot of things at you so um yeah I'm just glad to get back into it yeah for me too I also like like because of school like I had like a lot of art that I wanted to do but I couldn't and then over quarantine I think like I just like promised other people like yo oh you want me to draw this yeah I have time now you know it's quarantine and then I actually ended up like not drawing anything for myself which is kind of sad but then I just like started drawing more again and like I think my skills like really grew for quarantine and then I think I also got into gaming a lot which is like pretty or like I used to be like pretty big into gaming but then I stopped because like I concentrated on drawing in school a lot I think for me also gaming was like a really like new hobby or kind of new hobby I guess that I picked up like I played mainly like League of Legends and Genshin 
and it was just like interesting because it was like something like new it's like instead of like creating something I was the one using something that someone else has created and that was like a pretty fun experience for me and then some of them it was like oh like yo this person created like these characters and they're really cool and that also like it also like helps me give inspiration like oh that's so cool I want to like try doing something like that and that also helps me like if I ever like I'm feeling like oh I don't know what to draw then I'll just like think about it or like I'll play one of the games and I'll be like yo this is cool I want to be like this and stuff like that what about Wait, you? I do want to say though like Wait. as artists we have so much power if you think about it we can create anything <laughs> um you know we can make up cursed content if we wanted to yeah um but yeah, I think that's why I really like drawing because you get to make something um you know you can talk get you get to call something your, your own and also art doesn't really it doesn't there's no one way of doing art you know like um it, it doesn't like it can be messy but still beautiful and like convey your message i think personally i i feel like i've lost a lot of hobbies over quarantine because a lot of my hobbies had to do with like uh like sports or like uh with people in person and i think it's been like really difficult for me to pick things up because I'm I definitely think I'm more of somebody who likes doing like things with other people a lot and like solitary hobbies don't interest me as much I guess like I tried to pick up drawing but I I'm not a good artist not that much and um I guess like I it's not really a hobby but I have been working on just getting better at communicating with people I just get better at kind of being able to read other people and understand like nonverbal cues and stuff like that because I didn't like in the past I haven't been the best at it so I've been working on that yeah I'm like that's definitely something good to um like you know it's good to uh learn um yeah I think I guess if we're talking also talking about like stuff not really hobbies but stuff we're trying to like learn over um quarantine i think for me i learned how to be more and i think it's for everyone like it's probably the same for everyone but i learned how to be more independent so um mm -hmm. you know earlier during um at the beginning of quarantine i struggled a lot with just you know being by myself and not being with my friends at school going to school every day um, but i think because of that like yeah i i spent a lot of time by myself and I did that more and more like obviously it's good to like go out um well obviously social distance and wear masks and go talk to people interact with people but also it's fine to um be by yourself you know as for me I learned how to be satisfied with being by myself and doing things by myself and I'm really glad that I learned that because I think uh, with everything that's happened this year it required a lot of independent work right so yeah I'm I'm kind of glad like quarantine has really changed me um the person that I was sophomore year is not like this maybe in some ways I am still kind of the same but overall I'm glad I changed changed for the worse yeah mm -hmm. I think quarantine for me was also like a really big learning period like before quarantine I I don't know like I didn't I don't know I just like was very confused I guess because I was like stressed at school and I wasn't like aware of myself and I think with quarantine I was able to like spend more time with myself just like doing what I enjoy and like because of that I like found my passion in art again I like kind of just found myself and like realized like what type of person I am because like with school and like everything going around around me because there's like you know like drama at school because you know there's like gossip and rumors and stuff and there's like schoolwork too I was like really mm -hmm. confused like around that time of quarantine and the quarantine came around and like I'm able to like spend t more time with myself and like figure out myself a little bit more. So for me, quarantine like kind of really allowed me to grow a lot more and like figure out more about like myself and like what do I enjoy? You know, like like do I enjoy like being alone? Yes, I do. And like, but now it's like okay, like I'm more confident in myself. So like I'm okay to be like, hey, do you guys do you like maybe want to like uh like just a little distance and, like go outside maybe hang out like at the park or something? And like I feel more confident to do that and like ask people to like and also being safe and stuff but like and there's like people who are like there to like, accept me as well and like kind of for me quarantine like and like the hobbies and stuff like finding myself I think was 
probably the best part about quarantine for me, even though like it really sucks for everyone. But I think for me, if I have to look at like the positives, that's probably my biggest positive. Yeah, for sure. I guess there's one more thing I wanted to add. Um, yeah, uh, I it's like getting a little emotional after talking about squishmallows and all that. But um, yeah, so yeah, definitely quarantine allowed me to learn more about myself and to figure like what do I really like and what do I dislike? Because um, I think before when I used to be going to school every day, I was obviously influenced by like the people around me. So maybe I kind of lost myself during that. But um, now that with quarantine and, you know, not seeing people as much, I got to, yeah, I got to learn more about myself. I got to learn like, hey, this works with me or no, this doesn't work with me. Um, yes, an example of that is like, um, I guess my outfit style. Uh, so before I didn't really, have one I think I think I just went with like what was trendy and stuff but now um after just like yeah just like I guess doing some research I found that like I love comfortable clothing I kind of love like loose clothing as well um it's just yeah it's just super comfortable and I feel good in it so um I'm glad I figured that out and some other stuff like I guess super ship related but yeah um, is there anything else you guys want to add before? Because this meeting is getting very close to the end. <laughs> I'm like, close. I'm looking like I'm watching it at the same time I'm talking. I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I'm good. Me too. Sounds good. Alrighty. So, um, before we end the meeting, I just want to thank you guys for coming here. Um, I'm glad we had a very interesting fun um discussion over horror movies squishmallows and uh genshin <laughs> um <laughs> yeah to the people watching this i hope you guys enjoyed it um and have a lovely day everyone so bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.